So, different day, same stuff at the NCAA, and this one involves the uh, University of Tennessee football coaches and admin. Uh, this one is one to pay attention to because uh, it involves all the bad stuff, and it happened over a period of time, so it wasn't just a single one-off bad decision. Um, as I've talked about before, anytime you're looking at these kind of violations, it's always, uh, is it a one-off or is it a pattern? Is it something that happened in ancient history or is it fairly recent? And does it involve malfeasance versus misfeasance? That's kind of stuff that the NCAA is going to take a look at when they start dishing out the penalties. <clears throat> and this one, again, is University of Tennessee football programs, pretty high profile. Uh, it's ongoing, but you want to go to the initial uh, media post, which was on February 28th, 2023. So you dial over to NCAA.org, go to news and go back to February 28th, 2023, and pull this one up. But pay attention to it. It's ongoing. Uh, some of the actors have settled, and some have not, so they haven't posted a lot of details on it. But this one has all the stuff you don't want to see. So these were uh, Tennessee football coaches, admin. Uh, the agreed-upon violation violations occurred over several academic years. You never want to see that. That's a pattern. It involved cash payments to recruits and their families. Never a good thing. Malfeasance. It involved impermissible recruiting contacts and impermissible recruiting inducements during unofficial visits. So it has all the hallmarks of, of what the NCAA doesn't want to see, uh, and they will probably hammer them pretty hard after they get done with the investigation. But pay attention to this one just because when, it, when something like this happens over a period of time, not a one-off, involves direct cash payments to the recruits and the families, all kinds of malfeasance going on impermissible recruiting contacts, impermissible recruiting inducements. That's the kind of stuff uh, that's going to be looked at pretty closely by the NCAA, and it's going to impact uh, the recruiting down the road. But again, this is ongoing, so kind of bookmark this one and uh, pay attention to it. Then again, um, I do have my course over on Udemy trying out that platform uh, that covers the transfer portal and all the recruiting issues. This is the one to really pay attention to. Name, image, likeness, that, that's going to be pretty much buttoned up for now as long as the athletes are using those third-party services like Open Doors, the compliance is built in, and the companies that are paying the athletes for the nil are paying the admin fee to Open Doors. So it's kind of a, a no-lose situation for the athletes for now. Of course, I'll change over time. So for now, we really got to focus on the recruiting and the transfer inducements and pretty much all the information in my course. You can get that for free. If you want to poke around at the NCAA.org, uh, but I just kind of went through, uh, pulled out all the key information, some resources, some analysis uh, that'll kind of shorten the uh, shorten the time that it takes to get up to speed on this. So you can take the course over at Udemy for 20 bucks, or you can always just go to the NCAA.org and uh, poke around there for all the info. So ho hopefully it helps. Uh, pay attention to this case because again, it's, is it a one-off? Is it a pattern? Secondly, is it malfeasance or misfeasance? And then third, um, is, is it is it recent or ancient history? So you got to take a look at those things to find out how uh, difficult it's going to be once the NCAA, NCAA gets done with their investigation. All right, hope that helps.